take a moment here and watch this new video that we have coming in, which is showing the moment that the spire at the Cathedral of Notre Dame collapsed. Let's listen. And you can hear Parisians there and tourists, no doubt, looking on with horror. Uh, these, uh, I want to go to our correspondent, Melissa Bell, who is live for us there on the scene. Melissa, give us the latest. Well, here, uh, just uh, beyond uh, Notre Dame, this is about as close as we can get at this stage because progressively they've been pushing people further and further back. And as you can see, the crowds here are pretty big. And what the police, uh, so policemen and women and the fire services are saying, the emergency services are saying, is that it's just getting too dangerous to be any closer to the structure itself. And what we saw about 15 minutes ago, Brianna, were uh, not just the soot that had been falling from the sky, but actually bits of cinder that were uh, burning our hair, getting into people's eyes and hurting people, which is why they've been pushed back so much more but clearly it is a sense of astonishment and bewilderment shock and horror that has really brought these crowds out Parisians and tourists alike uh, to watch the structure go up in uh, flames and as you can perhaps see and this is really as close as we can get uh, this is as close as the cordon allows us to get you can see uh, perhaps Brianna that the water from the uh, fire engine hoses is now reaching up towards the top of the structure that was not the case a short while ago but uh, uh -huh. now getting up there to the top of those flames and it's what we've been talking about earlier on that that fire is so high the structure is so high that that was always going to be uh, the difficulty as they sought to get these flames under control clearly a fire that broke out very violently and very quickly we don't for the time being know what yet know why we don't know what caused it we don't know how much damage it's done inside but just from watching the structure burn over the course of the last hour or so Brianna the, the damage we're thinking will be substantial the roof uh, appears to have burned uh, entirely we watched earlier and you could hear the crowds really shout out in horror as a spire went up in smoke uh, and uh, as part of the structure fell so uh, people here really living this fire as they watch it this is an extraordinary structure a very historic one one that people come from all over the world to see up close, visiting both its outside, that very famous facade that you can see uh, just behind me, but also its inside, which we're thinking at this stage, and there's been no confirmation of what damage has been caused, but will clearly have suffered uh, a, a great deal of harm. And even as I speak, those fire engines have, surrounding it, ha have surrounded the structure. The water cannons are now uh, being uh, directed towards the very top uh, of the roof and now reaching those flames, but still those flames continue to burn here in Paris, Brianna. And so are you seeing any different? We've seen, we, we from our vantage point, uh, from one of the cameras, we were able to see that actually there were some firefighters who had gotten up considerably high on the sort of the outside of one of the walls. And they were, there was, uh, they, they were pouring some water onto the fire, but it seemed like a, I, I would say a modest effort when you're looking at uh, sort of what they could offer, at least from that position they were in to how big the flames were. But we are seeing some white smoke. You were describing earlier, Melissa, you saw yellow smoke, you saw black smoke. We're now seeing, here, we, here we're seeing another in our live picture. Uh, I believe that is uh, a water cannon coming from uh, a ladder, I believe. Um, and that, that seems to be making, well, well, it's hard to see the progress, but that's a considerable amount of water that's being poured on. We're seeing more white smoke. Are, are you seeing that? That's right. The, the smoke appears to be dampening down. It is clearly not as thick as it was even about uh, 20 minutes ago. It is not as dark or as yellow either as it was in the very beginning. And also those flames which continue to consume uh, that rooftop. You can see them perhaps from our shot here. Uh, they continue uh, to burn uh, that roof of Notre Dame. But clearly that water that is uh, even now from those hoses uh, making its way onto the fire is having some effect. And you can see it, uh, as you say, Brianna, by the amount of smoke uh, billowing out. It has changed color and there isn't as much of it as there were. Also, the cinders that were falling from the sky just a few moments ago onto our hair uh, have uh, now stopped falling. So uh, some degree of control is being brought to this fire. Uh, but still, uh, uh, this is likely to go on for some time. It was a very large fire as it, at its height and that entire rooftop of Notre Dame uh, for a while was consumed by flames that went up as high as 
the two towers of that facade, that iconic uh, facade. That's how high those flames were only about 20 minutes ago. So some progress is being made, but this was clearly a very violent fire that raged very suddenly and took over a very large part of Notre Dame Cathedral. So it will take some time to put it out entirely, Brianna. Yeah, and so you were on the front side of the Cathedral of Notre Dame. So you are, uh, you, you are seen through the facade, that view. We are seeing the exact opposite view uh, in the pictures that we're showing on the, on the air, Melissa. So we're looking, we're looking from the back of the cathedral and we're seeing some of the efforts of firefighters. And I'll tell you what we are still seeing, even as there is some white smoke, even as some of these flames have been beat back by the efforts of firefighters, we're still seeing flames that, that have to be at least 30 or 40 feet tall. And there's so much what appears to be uh, flammable scaffolding, I will say, uh, underneath some of the flames that we're seeing there. As you're, as you're looking around, as these crowds around you have been pushed back, Melissa, and people, people are watching and they, you've described them, they've had their hands to their mouth, they are aghast. Tell us what you've seen. Well, we've seen, uh, I've seen over the course of the last hour or so, and it's pretty chaotic here, as you can see. They are continually trying to push the cordon back, which has gotten so big because so many people are trying to watch to get a view on what is happening. The policemen and women trying to push people back ever further to protect them from the flames and from the cinders. Police cars are all around trying to push back what are now substantial crowds. But yes, I've seen people crying. I've seen people holding themselves. This was such a shocking sight. And of course, we don't know for the time being whether there have been any casualties, if there were people inside at the time when it broke out, how quickly the evacuation happened uh, of these uh, facts, we know nothing for now, but perhaps you can see there from the shot that we now have at the very front of the cordon that the, the structure itself, so much of that roof has now uh, vanished with just bits of scaffolding remaining uh, around the building. And those uh, flames appear now to be slightly smaller than they were uh, just a quarter of an hour or so ago. So some progress is being made. Uh, but scenes of chaos really here in Paris. It took uh, everyone so much by surprise, security services, uh, fire services, and as they struggle to get through the afternoon traffic, because of course this happened just after rush hour, uh, it would have been very difficult for those fire engines to get there uh, in time, to get there and to be able to make any progress at all. That appears now to be happening. We can see uh, the jets of water making their way up uh, there on uh, to the roof and putting out uh, some of their flames, bringing uh, the beginning of the fire under control, but clearly a uh, sense of shock here in Paris as uh, Parisians have watched one of their most iconic cathedrals go up in flames. Yeah, it is, it is uh, horrific as you describe, Melissa Bell. If you could stand by for us, we'll be right back with you. I do want to bring in Patrick Gailey. He is there on the scene. He's a correspondent for Agence France Press. Uh, you're on the phone with us, Patrick. Tell us what, where are you in relation, uh, where, where are you in relation to the uh, facade of the church? Are you near the rear or the front of the church? And tell us what you're seeing. Um, I've been evacuated across the river now. So I'm on okay. the north, I'm on the uh, Rive Gauche of the Seine. Um, I'm looking at the rear of the two towers and uh, I can see that the roof has been more or less completely burnt away, a little bit more just collapsed. Um, and in fact, I was on the scene when the spire uh, came down. So quite dramatic stuff. And, and tell what was the reaction of that? Because that seemed to really be a moment to Parisians who were watching. Uh, you know, they were in disbelief, and that sort of punctuated just how much the damage was. I, I think the word is disbelief. You're right. Um, there's people crying, you know, people holding their mouths, walking around in a state of shock and just uh, mourning, really. Uh, it, it, it's a very surreal scene. The, the smoke looks acrid from what we've been seeing, just this ye dense yellow smoke. What, is it, what does it smell like there? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, the, the actually, as I can see the sun setting in the background now, the, the smoke has moved to blot out the sun, in fact. Um, it's, it, 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 you, can, you can hear the burning and you can smell it, even though I'm probably about 100 meters away now across the river. And so, and what is, tell us, and there's a lot of unanswered questions at this point in time, right? We do not know what caused this. We do not know if there was any personal damage. We do not know if people were inside the church, but presumably there would have been on a day like this, uh, many people inside the church touring it. This is, this is one of the biggest tourist attractions in Paris. 
Yeah, yeah um, I, I, as to whether there were people inside, I, I genuinely don't know. But you're, you're right, it is an icon of Paris. It's one of the top three, I think, visited play, um, landmarks in the world. And, um, I mean, obviously, it's extremely popular with visitors. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just unbelievable that this has happened. You, I can see from where I'm stood the uh, vast sta- scaffolding that was um, erected on the roof and around the spire. And I know that they were... Um, in the process of removing and cleaning some of the statues that are on the roof. Uh, But that whole structure, apart from the metal scaffolding, has now disappeared. 